It's Platt, and today we head to New Jersey. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer I have today comes to us from Flying Fish Brewing. It is their Abbey Double. Uh, we reviewed one of their beers before. We had their Winter Crew, I believe, a couple of years uh, go. Uh, a little background to Flying Fish. Flying Fish was founded in 1995 by a gentleman named Gene Muller and was based in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. A lot of hype to this brewery at the time because when it opened, it was the world's first virtual microbrewery. Um, that was the early days of the internet. Anything that was virtual or what have you instantly gained traction. Um, he, Gene was kind of genius at the time. He, uh, there was no actual brewery. He contracted his brewing and would sell his beers directly to the customer online through the internet. Uh, this was, uh, like I said, the early days of the internet, and it was probably before states had an opportunity to really understand about regulating sales through the internet. So Gene was kind of a pioneer there. Uh, the name Flying Fish uh, comes from a constellation that can be seen in the night sky in the southern hemisphere. I'm not a huge uh, astronomy astrology guy, so I'll, I'll take Gene's word for uh, that one. Uh, because the initial hype over the brewery, quote-unquote virtual brewery, when it uh, opened, real quickly Gene realized that he was going to have to get a physical brewery up and going, and so the next year, 1996, he opened an actual physical brewery. It was the first micro or craft brewery in southern New Jersey, and I think the first brewery that had been hoping there in over 50 years. Um, he, uh, uh, like I said, immediately they gained some traction, and uh, like I said, things just slowly progressed. Uh, years later, in 2012, they ended up moving the company to their current uh, headquarters in Somerdale, New Jersey. They upgraded the facilities quite a bit. They went from a 10,000 square foot facility to 45,000 square foot facility. They more than doubled uh, brewing capacity from 20 barrels to uh, 50 barrels. Again, you know, a, a nice leap in production capability. Uh, one of the things that Flying Fish really brags about and uh, one of the selling points of the brewery is how eco-friendly or environmentally conscious they are. One of the things is they power the brewery with the use of something like 460 different solar panels, what have you, pretty pretty large array of solar panels. Uh, they also use solar tube lighting, which is more efficient. Another thing they do is recapture steam from the brew kettle. Probably not something you think about, but... As a home brewer, I kind of noticed it takes a lot, a lot of energy to heat up water to boil for a brew arbor, especially when you're doing 50 barrels, that's 100 kegs at a time. And a lot of that energy leaves off as heat energy through steam. So they recapture that either to use to heat the building itself, heat the water for the next run, you know, the, what's called the hot liquor tank. Uh, several other breweries do that. It's kind of a cool, uh, just more efficient way of uh, brewing. And uh, lastly, they also have a rain garden outside. I guess they collect rainwater. I'm not 100% sure what they do to it. But again, just little steps they try to do to, you know, not just make good beer, but uh, be good citizens of the planet Earth. So I guess, I guess we all went on that. Real quick, let's talk about some of their other beers. Uh, first is Citra, 5.2% ABV. This is just kind of a straightforward pale ale made with Citra and Warrior hops. Uh, nothing real uh, extravagant about this beer, but I, I pointed it out because I've thought about if, if I ever started a brewery, you know, what are the beers going to have? And like the first two or three, it, it's not going to be a marshmallow stout or anything like that. You kind of need a pale ale, a blonde, you know, some building blocks. And that's probably what this beer is. It's just kind of a building block for the rest of the line. And I thought I'd throw it in there. Next is something a little different, though. Uh, a Blackberry Braggot, 12% ABV. For those of you who may not know, a Braggot is kind of a hybrid. It's kind of a cross between mead and beer. Uh, in the mash bill, there'll be barley and honey. So uh, something a little different there. Next is Mango Smoothie, 5% ABV. This is made with mango puree and oats. A lot of these smoothie beers will use lactose, powdered lactose, uh, to get that kind of creamy mouthfeel, but you can also use oats instead. So uh, it's just kind of a different way to get a similar mouthfeel. Finally is a beer I am definitely going to keep my eye out for. It's Fried Ice Cream Stout, 10.2% uh, ABV. Sorry about that. 
It's an imperial stout made with vanilla ice cream and cornflakes. I know people might say cornflakes, but I've brewed beer with cornflakes, and I know there's several variety of beers out there now that use cornflakes. It's just a nice little addition to the mash bill. Uh, if you use it in brewing, you're not going to get like kernel of a corn or, you know, you're biting corn off the cob. It's a different kind of corn flavor to it, but it definitely works. And if you're a home brewer, give it a try sometime. It likes it's an, a neat little additive uh, to your mash bill. Uh, one other thing about Flying Fish, they don't do any hard seltzers or sodas or anything else. They're just kind of a straightforward brewery. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. So today I thought since we're trying what's called an Abbey Double, a Belgian Double, it's a Trappist style of beer, I want to talk about the term and more importantly in context of doubles, triples, and quads. Those are other Abbey style beers. Um, one of the first questions I want to answer like, well, if there's double, triple, and quad, is there a single? Belgians wouldn't use the term, but basically a single would just be kind of a straightforward Belgian pale ale. You know, you're 4 to 5% you know, classic kind of pale ale. Uh, a double, which is what we have here, generally runs from 6 to 7.5% ABV, a little bit higher. Uh, it's going to be a darker beer, SRM 16 to 36. Uh, your, your deep browns, deep coppers, a uh, little ruby color to it. And uh, IBUs 20 to 35. Uh, that may seem elevated, but because of the additional malt, the ramping up of the ABV, it's, it's balanced. You're not going to pick up a ton of hop flavor or bitterness on these styles of beers. Next is a triple T-R-I-P-E-L, double spelled D-U-B-B-E-L. Uh, the triples tend to be from 7 to 10% ABV, you know, pretty high ABVs for, you know, your standard beers. Uh, it's a lighter colored beer. SRM is going to be between 4 and 7. If you didn't know what you're doing or just kind of saw it there, you think, oh, a blonde ale or a regular pale ale until you drink it. Like, oh, that ain't, <laughs> that ain't a blonde ale. Uh, S, uh, IBUs are going to be 20 to 45. A little more room on the top end, and that's just because, again, we're adding more malt in there to kind of uh, bump up that ABV. Uh, again, you're not going to notice the additional hops on your palate. And finally, a quad or quadruple. Uh, these beers tend to be 10% and higher. These are really big beers. Uh, darker in color, but not as dark as a double. SRM is going to be between 8 and 20. Uh, the IBUs will be between 25 and 50. Again, we're moving up that IBU scale, but you're not going to notice it because at 10% ABV, we're putting a ton of malt in that thing. And that additional hops is just there for balance. So... Hopefully that's a little primer for you and you feel maybe feel more comfortable ordering these styles of beers. Again, you know, you don't want to order a triple thinking, oh, that's really a blonde ale or something, you know, just uh, or a quad when you meant a double, whatever. It just likes a little primer there for you. Well, that being said, let's try this double. All right, see, we kind of got a dark copper, brownish copper to it. A nice lighter khaki head, about a finger's worth. Yeah, pretty straightforward nose malt. You're not, you're not getting, uh, you're not even going to get any hop aroma really off these style of beers. Let's give them a try. Oh, that's nice. That is not, that's well executed for that style. This beer is going to have a little more mouthfeel than kind of what you're used to. The alcohol is not quite burning, but, but when you drink, you're like, all right, there's, we got something there. We're definitely working with something. Um, in a lot of these uh, Belgian-style beers that are higher ABV, you're going to get, or just in my opinion, some more dark fruit notes instead of just a lot of malt. Like the sweetness is not just straight malt sweetness. There's some dark fruit characters to it. Um... finish it's going to sit on your palate a little bit uh, you do get the, the malt sweetness up front too but it's going to sit on the palate for a little bit it, it will stay with you it's not a long finishing beer but you notice it it's going to sit there with you again just deeper flavors um you know some people might look at this and say color wise oh it's similar to some marzins or stuff like that just 
kind of think about those darker notes in the margin just more and deeper um, than that. It's, it may seem like a simplistic way to describe it, but that's kind of the best way I've got. But these are really good beers, in it, and uh, this one is executed well for this style. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.